The Lord be with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to our service this morning for the second Sunday of Lent. Today in our Gospel reading we will learn about what is involved in being a follower of Christ and taken about taking up our crosses in order that we will have eternal life but I'm sure we'll investigate that further later. But let us begin by saying the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord, Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. <clears throat> there is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God. Our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now say the song of the angels. Glory to God in the highest. I, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father. We worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father. Lord God, Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So now let us have our readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abraham fell on his face and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your, and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her. 
and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are, who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the death, dead and gives it calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations. According to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> and also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you ever stood in a line on a school playing field, waiting to be picked for a team? If, like me, you're rubbish at sports, you might have waited a long time, knowing that you would be one of the last to be chosen. It's not a nice feeling. It's humiliating. And thankfully, it's not something that's done these days. 
When Jesus picks his team, he doesn't stand everyone in a line, but seeks them out where they are, casting their nets into the lake, at the tax collector's booth, or under a fig tree. And he doesn't pick the obvious candidates either. After all, he's picked you and me. This morning's gospel makes uncomfortable listening for us, just as Jesus's words made uncomfortable listening for Peter, who was one of the first to be picked for Team Jesus. But we're into the second Sunday in Lent, so perhaps we should expect to be challenged. Some team leaders are afraid to be questioned, but Jesus welcomes questions. Questions from his disciples, a question from a young man wanting to know what he must do to inherit eternal life. Even questions from the scribes and Pharisees, although Jesus knows they're only trying to catch him out. He's confident in who he is and in his mission. His faith in his heavenly father is absolute. But faith, as Peter finds out the hard way, doesn't come easily. As Abraham learnt centuries earlier, faith has to be worked at constantly. Poor Peter, admiring Jesus as he evidently does, he's not afraid to confront him, to suggest that this man he's given up everything to follow might actually be wrong. If we'd read the passage that comes immediately before today's gospel, we'd have heard Jesus asking his disciples, who do you say that I am? Peter at that moment has so much faith that he answers with conviction, you are the Christ, meaning you are the promised Messiah we've all been waiting for. Of all the disciples, Peter is the boldest, the spokesperson, the man of strong faith. And yet, as soon as Jesus starts to explain what his being the Christ actually means, Peter's faith wavers. He takes Jesus aside and rebukes him. In turn, Jesus rebukes Peter, rather sternly we might think. But try if you can to put yourself in Jesus's sandals. Peter has just put into words exactly the temptation Jesus is facing. He doesn't want to die, but he knows he must if he's to fulfill God's plan. Like Satan in the wilderness, Peter hints there might be a way out. But Jesus knows he must go through with it. Peter's rebuke is a reminder to Jesus that he will have to keep working at resisting temptation, just as we all do. Peter and the other disciples might at this moment see themselves as on the losing team. In his indignation, it seems Peter misses Jesus' reference to his rising again. But then he doesn't know the whole story. Like so many people of his time, his expectation of the Messiah, the Christ, is someone powerful and invincible, not someone who will be rejected, suffer and die. It's no wonder Peter fails to make sense of what Jesus has said. To us, Jesus's words are prophetic. We know that what he predicted would happen to him did happen. He did undergo suffering. He was rejected by the religious authorities. He was killed. But the advantage we have is that we've joined the team after the resurrection, after our leader has triumphed. Knowing that Jesus did indeed rise from the dead it shouldn't be as hard for us as it was for Peter. But it isn't easy either. Here is Jesus, whom Marcus told us from the outset is the son of God, whom God described in last week's gospel reading as my son, the beloved, telling us not only that he will suffer, but that anyone who chooses to follow him will face hardship warning that anyone in his team must deny themselves 
and take up their cross is hardly an encouragement to the disciples and the crowd around them to follow him. Maybe it doesn't encourage us either. Belonging to a team always involves putting in effort. Whenever we join a team of any kind, we know it's going to mean a level of hardship. Every member of a sports team is expected to train, pushing themselves beyond their comfort zone. Anyone in a mountain rescue team or a lifeboat crew has to be prepared to go out in the worst of conditions and put themselves at risk for the greater good. Being part of a team can be challenging and belonging to Team Jesus is not so very different. Except that we can have absolute confidence in our team leader. We can learn from him too how we should lead if we're put in a position of authority. Jesus never expects his team to do anything he's not prepared to do himself. And when he needs help, he prays to his heavenly father. Ultimately, he's prepared to die for the sake of his team. What else does it mean for us to be part of Team Jesus? It will almost certainly mean denying ourselves in some way, as the first disciples found out. It might mean giving away some of our financial resources, giving up some of our time. It will mean not just believing the gospel, but living it. We could start this Lent by bringing God into the conversations we have with our non-Christian friends or family members, making ourselves vulnerable by sharing our story. Like Peter, there'll be times when we'll mess up. Peter swore he'd never disown Jesus, but soon afterwards, as he warmed himself by the fire in the high priest's courtyard, he denied three times that he even knew him. Yet Jesus forgave Peter. He not only kept him on the team, but he chose him as the one to take over the leadership. Jesus trusted Peter not to let him down again. Being part of Team Jesus, as we all are, can be risky. It can be costly. But who wouldn't want to follow a leader like that? Amen. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess the faith of the church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Loving God, as you revealed yourself to Abraham in ancient days, reveal yourself to this present age. Make us into a faithful people ready to believe your promises and follow you wherever you will lead us. 
Now, why did this happen to me? Father God, we come to you this morning and ask you to help us walk like Abraham, trusting you to fulfill all you have promised. Help our faith grow so we can be beacons of your light in Ifield. We thank you for your example of Jesus and remind us daily that he has called us to take up our crosses and follow him. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our world, all the areas of unrest and difficulties. Particularly, we pray for Yemen, Myanmar, Russia, India, Syria, North Korea, Colombia and Brazil. These are full of people you love who are made in your image, facing extreme poverty, war and danger. We pray for refugees in Lebanon and Bangladesh, Europe and North Africa. We pray for all those who are stuck in dire circumstances because of the pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, you created this wonderful world, yet us humans are making it hotter and ecosystems are being destroyed in the name of progress. Lord, we pray that all people would face up to the evils of deforestation and the loss of habitat for animals and nomadic people. We pray for all politicians having to make decisions that affect our climate. We pray that they would make decisions to benefit the poorest people and they would act with integrity and promote justice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father God, we thank you for the spring flowers and the sun coming out. We praise you for the birds and the new buds and the beautiful things going on in our climate and the warmer weather. We pray that we would have a good Lent and that we would be close to you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our own country and all the young people who have missed out on schooling, especially those for poorer families. We pray for all those in insecure housing, having to use food banks. We also pray for those who live alone and need to isolate because of the pandemic. We thank you that the vaccine programme is progressing and we pray that people would be sensible and follow the rules. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, including the residents of Ifield Park and the patients of Langley Green Hospital. We also pray for William McKean, Myra Tyson, Arthur and Doris Pattendam, Bertie, Graham, Angela, Bill, Colin, Sharon, Alison Tucknock, Martin Fairbrother, Ian Phillips, Ron Binmore, Jill Gutterson, Maeve Isham, Barbara Wynne Stanley, Joseph Achukaro, and all people with mental health needs who do not understand why they cannot see family. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all the detainees at Gatwick and all the chaplains there who minister to them, particularly Janny, Jana and Abby. We pray for all the charities that support them. Lord, at this time, we also lift to you all other prisoners and pray for the chaplains that support them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we also pray for our police and other key workers that you would be with them and keep them safe. We pray for all families that are struggling with lockdown. And we pray against the rise in domestic violence and cybercrime. We lift to you the work of open house. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We thank you for the Lent courses in the parish and we pray that we would be better at listening to your voice and doing your will. 
We remember all our loved ones who've died and pray particularly for those who mourn and who have left their names on the fishing net. Howard, Sue, Alice and Robert, Angie, Paul, Debbie and Uncle Ted. We also pray for the return of the schoolgirls captured in Nigeria and Shamima Begin and all trafficked children. All trafficked people, we pray for our own country to treat people fairly and respect their human rights. We pray for justice for all those victims of crime. Merciful Father. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with all of you. Heavenly Father, accept the prayers left this past week on the fishing net. We pray that you will meet these people at the point of their need. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. They will become for us the bread of life and cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For in these 40 days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy. And therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and say our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. 
And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of St. Margaret and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, you see that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others as you were the servant of all and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. Just before we have the blessing dismissal and then go and get our coffee for our coffee um, after the service, um, just to say that there are no different notices today. Um, everything that you probably need to know um, is on the uh, new sheet so that includes the coffee morning on Wednesday and the late course on Wednesday evening. Thank you very much for those of us those of you who did join us and um, hopefully that we'll see a few more of you uh, next week. Um, 
you will see that uh, Sue's next delivery um, request for food for the to do a delivery for the Easter team is on Friday the 5th of March so if you have got any donations either get them to her or put them in the church and I'm sure she'd be very very grateful for anything that you could uh, contribute. Uh, the Easter family fun pack. I hope that's going well. Do I get a thumbs up from Naomi? A thumbs up from Naomi. That's going really well. If you would like for your family, I'm assuming, rather than just all everybody, um, then to get some uh, packs and resources to celebrate Easter, then do get in contact with her. And I'm sure she will arrange delivery don't, um, and where to put it, etc. Um, in due course. I think that was about all I had to say. Um, so... Let's have the blessing, the dismissal, and then do please go and get your cup of coffee so that we can all have a chat. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory. Be in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you all very much. Do go and get your coffee. <laughs>